Thank you very much for joining. I hope you can uh, hear me well. Um, it's about time to start. Um, this this um, presentation is about comparison of open source uh, software home automation tools. My name is Leonor Novi and I'm a senior software engineer at Kensuke Group. Uh, in the next 30 minutes, uh, I'll provide an overview of the open source home automation systems that I know, and at the end of the presentation, there will be like five minutes for Q&A. Um, I work for Consulco Group, which is a services company specialized in embedded Linux uh, and open source software. My colleagues and I have experience in uh, upstream contributions to various um, popular open source uh, projects, starting with the Linux kernel, U-Boot, the Yocto project and open embedded automotive grade Linux and many more. Uh, the company uh, has, um, has an office here in California. However, uh, we have engineers uh, around the world and I'm coming from the office in Bulgaria. So I'm traveling from Europe to here. Uh, the agenda for the next 30 minutes is um, of course home automation. First of all, what are the challenges in front of home automation? After that, uh, we will do an overview of the popular open source home automation open source platforms that already exist and uh, uh, we can use. And finally, um, I have a slide about uh, conclusions uh, based on my personal experience. I have to say that uh, this um, presentation is inspired uh, by my, um, my um, desire to pick up the right open source uh, software to install in my home to manage all these devices that I uh, take from different brands. Um, Internet of Things is no longer just a buzzword. A decade ago, everyone was speaking about Internet of Things, the huge possibilities that Internet of Things can provide. However, today, Internet of Things are all around us and there are new, new challenges in front of them. Internet of Things are heavily used in home automation, uh, task most not notably for smart speakers, smart lighting systems, uh, and uh, of course uh, robotic vacuum cleaners, which are very popular nowadays. Um, through various uh, gateways, it's possible nowadays to connect devices that are uh, operating on various protocols, such as Zigbee, Bluetooth, uh, to the internet as well. Obviously, having Internet of Things in our home automation has a lot of advantages, but it also uh, has some disadvantages. The major advantage is that when we combine artificial intelligence and machine learning with the big data generated from all those sensors and smart devices that we have in our houses, uh, we have huge opportunities to understand uh, our, ourselves better and to, to optimize uh, a lot of processes that we do, and to make uh, life, uh, our life uh, better, of course. So the disadvantages, uh, the not so bright side of the things is that uh, when you buy devices from different vendors, it's very hard to make them work together. There are several initiatives that we're gonna mention that are trying to solve this. Um, very often sensitive personal inf uh, information is stored in the cloud and there is no option uh, to use a device without a connection to the cloud. As a software engineer, I'm always concerned about privacy without, I wouldn't say that I'm a privacy or security freak in any way, but still sometimes, you know, having personal information in the cloud is something that bothers me. So how open source can help uh, make things better? The first of all, there are uh, collaborative projects for inter interoperability. Uh, this means that uh, when you have numerous devices uh, from different vendors, these projects are trying to solve uh, on a vendor level uh, this problem by using uh, similar protocols and uh, making things work together. Um, some of those uh, projects uh, have been present on previous editions of the Embedded Linux conference, so I'm sure you are familiar with those names. Uh, the Open Connectivity Foundation, uh, which, uh, which is a joint venture between uh, Intel and Samsung, OpenDOF, uh, which is adopted in uh, Panasonic devices. Of course, Mozilla Web of Things, I'm sure everyone knows Mozilla, and they have this initiative for Internet of Things, uh, and in the slides you see that they have even an implementation that you can also 
use and uh, the Eclipse IoT Foundation is also working on a variety of open source projects which helps uh, connect various devices. Uh, however, uh, today we'll focus not on these initiatives but more on open source home automation platforms which are far more practical. Uh, they, they are started by uh, various people, various creators, because they had the problem that I had in my home. After buying all those devices from different vendors, I wanted to, to control them together, to make them work together. So, um, in, in the next slides, I'll cover more than 10 of those platforms. So, when I was preparing initially uh, for, for this talk, I had in mind to focus only on three of them and a few others. However, uh, it appears that there are so many other home automation open source platforms that it's very hard to pick just one. Therefore, uh, I decided to put a lot of slides and to cover some of them, not all of them, of course. Um, we are not gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison, but rather say what, what are the benefits and, uh, of each platform. Of course, there are a lot of links, so after the talk, uh, uh, the slides are, are already shared, so you can have a look and check all the details. Uh, I have to say a disclaimer here. I have used um, some of those uh, systems personally in my home, uh, not all of them, and I don't consider myself an expert because uh, you see that the, some of those uh, systems have uh, a, lot of, a lot of features, uh, a lot of features that I, I'm not very familiar with as well. However, uh, some of them have very good documentation, others not so good, and I hope this presentation will show you uh, the variety of open source uh, home automation platforms that are there on the market. And finally, uh, in the conclusions, we can have uh, some kind of a discu discussion. I'll share with you my thoughts of what's, what's good and what can be made better. All right, so uh, let's start with Home Assistant. Uh, how many of you are using Home Assistant? Can you raise your hand? All right, okay, that's a fair amount of people. Um, so Home Assistant is an open source home automation platform which is written in Python 3 with Polymer and YAML uh, for configuration files. Uh, it's uh, one of those platforms that is perfect to run on Raspberry Pi and you see in the next slide that uh, Raspberry Pi obviously is uh, very popular among these uh, open source home automation platforms because most of the time people are creating like do-it-yourself solutions with installing these open source software solutions. Um, uh, home Assistant nowadays, uh, it's uh, recommended to work on Raspberry Pi 3B uh, or newer such as uh, B plus or eventually even 4. It has been started uh, six years ago and actually I've never met the creator of the project but I believe he, he's uh, living here in San Diego. Uh, there is a really nice talk um, uh, by him on a, from a previous edition of Embedded Linux Conference, which is available online. At the last of my slides, you see a link to this talk. I highly recommend you to have a look at it, where he um, explains internals how Home Assistant works and makes a deep dive. Um, here, we will not have enough time to do a deep dive in any of the platforms that we, we will discuss. Uh, Home Assistant has a huge community. Uh, there are more than uh, uh, 1,500 uh, 1, contributors. Uh, they have uh, forums with a, with a lot of people asking questions, replying questions. Uh, the documentation is, uh, is quite good. Uh, of course, uh, the, the source code is available at GitHub under Apache 2.0 license, so it's an entirely open source project. The key features is that uh, Home Assistant supports more than 1,000 components. Uh, in other words, most probably if you buy, um, if you buy a, a device, a home automation internet of thing uh, from available on the market, most probably an integration for it already exists uh, in home, home Assistant. Of course, the examples are like IKEA, Trophy, Philips Hue, Google Assistant, Alexa, Amazon Echo, Nest, Kodi, and so on. Uh, the good thing in Home Assistant is that a few releases ago, uh, maybe it was approximately a year ago, um, they provided user logins, so the, you have um, um, a system with users, you can define users and restrict access to the system only by certain users. Um, they are continuing the efforts to make different permissions for those users so that the user 
in future would have access to different parts of the system. Uh, one of the key features that I really enjoy in Home Assistant is the automatic uh, discovery of devices. Um, this means that as soon as you have Home Assistant properly set up and running, uh, it will discover certain devices. Uh, there is a very well-defined protocols which uh, could help you do this. Another key feature is the automatic uh, updates of uh, the Labalas uh, UI. This is the default UI. And um, those of you who know me from my previous presentations know that I'm a huge fan of MQTT, the machine-to-machine -machine communication protocol. And uh, Home Assistant has an excellent integration of various MQTT uh, components. So, uh, as I told you, uh, Home Assistant uh, is, um, Home Assistant is um, uh, a solution that can run on various different platforms, but one of the most commonly used platforms is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, there are a couple of ways how to get started with Home Assistant on Raspberry Pi. Uh, nowadays, the recommended uh, solution is HasIO. This is an embedded Linux distribution, uh, which is uh, now made with built root. Uh, it has a Docker container and RAUC for software over the air updates. Uh, it has been started uh, by Pascal Vizeli in uh, two years ago in 2017. Uh, it's compatible not only with Raspberry Pi, but also with Intel Nuke, with Android uh, devices, Fingerboard, Orange Pi Prime, and of course, virtual, uh, virtual appliance. Uh, as far as I remember, initially they started with a build based on the Yocto project and Open Embedded. After that, they decided to switch to, to build root. Uh, Another option, which is uh, very popular uh, back in the days, was uh, to use the Hasbian image. The Hasbian image, as the name suggests, uh, is an image that out of the box installs Home Assistant on a, a Raspbian image, or, and uh, Raspbian is the, the, default, um, the default Linux distribution provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, for uh, all Raspberry Pi models and versions. Uh, it's for all Raspberry Pi models and versions because the image is compiled for RMV6. And of course, uh, you have the option to do a manual installation. Um, I told you that I'm a huge fan of MQTT. Um, just uh, to repeat once again, uh, Home Assistant has having more than a thousand components. These are just a few of those components that are related to MQTT. Um, MQTT is a machine-to-machine -machine protocol that helps you um, transfer um, payload, which could be text or binary payload, uh, through various connected devices uh, using a broker. How many of you have used MQTT? Okay, like half of the room, all right. Um, it's, um, it's a really awesome protocol uh, because it, uh, it allows you near real-time communication and it's very convenient for Internet of Things and both home, um, home automation. However, the problem is that uh, MQTT solves the issue how to transfer the data between the devices, but it does not define uh, the, how to serialize the data that you are transferring. So Home Assistant uh, has a solution for this. They have a very good documentation and a um, uh, very straightforward way uh, that includes JSON encoded messages, how to uh, send data uh, between the devices and an MQTT broker to which Home Assistant is connected. Um, I'm particularly uh, speaking about this because you see that some of the other systems that we're gonna, um, we, we're gonna uh, talk about have adopted this approach and have adopted the standard defined by Home Assistant. Um, so the next, um, and the next open source uh, home automation platform that I would like to cover is OpenHub. OpenHub is one of the uh, oldest uh, home automation systems. And how many of you have used it, no matter which version of OpenHub? Okay, just, all right, just three, four people, all right. Uh, so I'll, I'm gonna cover OpenHub 2 in the next few slides. Uh, there is a huge uh, changes between version one and two. Uh, Open, uh, Open Hub uh, stands for Open Home Automation Bus. Uh, the second version is written in, uh, actually both versions are written in Java, um, but this one has been uh, completely rewritten. That's, the, uh, that's why uh, there is a huge difference between version one and two, and there are a lot of tutorials if you are an existing Open Hub um, 
OpenHub user uh, with version one how to migrate to version two. Uh, for a while, it was based on the Eclipse Smart Home, uh, but um, since version uh, since version 2.5, uh, things have changed. Uh, it has more than a uh, uh, 1,500 supported things. These are the devices that you can integrate easily on OpenHub. Uh, it has been started uh, almost 10 years ago by Kai. It has uh, also a huge community, uh, more than uh, 400 contributors. The source code is available again at, uh, in GitHub. Uh, the license is Eclipse Public License uh, 2.0. Uh, you can install and run OpenHub on uh, uh, devices supporting Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, and GNU Linux distribution, including Raspberry Pi, uh, Pine64, or Docker. Um, OpenHub is also providing mobile applications for Android and iOS, which are available at the uh, application stores. Um, while speaking about uh, Home Assistant, I told you that Home Assistant uh, solves very well uh, the impurity uh, specification for payloads, and um, OpenHub uh, also has this uh, auto discovery feature really convenient. And it, uh, for Imputity, it supports both the Home specification and the Home Assistant Imputity components. The, the same components that you saw in the previous slides defined by Home Assistant can be used in a similar way by OpenHub. Uh, the next system that I would like uh, to, to talk with, with you about is Domotics. Now, how many of you are using Domotics? Anyone? All right. Uh, Although uh, nobody has said that it's using uh, from, from the people here in the room, it's again a very popular system. Uh, it's very lightweight. This is uh, one of the advantages of the Modex, and it's lightweight probably because it's written in C++. Um, uh, of course, there, there is support for a Python plugin framework. Uh, it again runs very well uh, on Raspberry Pi. It has been started seven years ago. Um, and it also has a big community with uh, more than uh, 250 contributors. The source code is available uh, again at GitHub under GPL version 3 license. Uh, you can install the Modex on Microsoft Windows and GNU Linux distribution. Um, again, it's, uh, it can run pretty well on Raspberry Pi. Uh, there is no dedicated image uh, for Raspberry Pi, unlike OpenHub and uh, Home Assistant. However, the installation uh, is, uh, is simplified by an, an installation script. All right, so now I would like to uh, give, an, give you an overview of other open source systems. There are many of them. Uh, of, we will not go into too much details, uh, probably because we don't have enough time for them, but you see some systems that have a very long history. And we are starting with Mr. House. Mr. House has been started 20 years ago. Uh, when I when I had a look at the logs and I saw that it started in '99, I was I was amazed. But home automation is obviously a problem uh, that has been around for quite a, quite a lot of time, and will it will remain. Uh, Mr. House is written in Perl uh, since it's a quite old uh, quite quite old tool. Uh, it runs on Windows 95 or newer versions of Windows, and of course most of the Unix-based platforms. Um, it's available again at GitHub under GPL uh, version 2 license. Uh, it doesn't have as big community nowadays as the three other systems that we had a look at. But of course, uh, if you like coding on Perl, it's, uh, it's good to have a look at it. Um, another system uh, written in Python with a front-end uh, front uh, web interface based on Aurelia is OpenMotix. Uh, this, uh, in, this is an interesting solution because uh, there is a company behind this project. It, it has been started um, more than 15 years ago and it became open source in 2012, seven years ago. The company is based in Belgium. Um, so it's, um, it provides not only the software but also the hardware. Uh, and they provide open source hardware, so some of the, uh, so the hardware schematics are available, uh, as well as the software, both are in GitHub. Um, Creative Commons is used for the open source hardware, 
uh, schematics and GPL version two for the software. Uh, there is a community maintained uh, Home Assistant plugin, uh, so you can use, um, uh, you can interface uh, things that uh, are already supported by Home Assistant. Another system that has a um, um, similar approach of not only providing the, the, the software, but also providing the hardware is uh, uh, GDOM. Uh, it's uh, written uh, in PHP, uh, has paid Android and iOS applications. Uh, it, it supports um, various protocols uh, through which you can uh, connect various Internet of Things and devices. Uh, it has been started uh, more than five years ago by two uh, co-founders, um, uh, which are based in France. Uh, the core uh, source code is available at GitHub under a GPL version two license. So here, the, the interesting part for those two solutions are that they are not only software, but they combine software and hardware. And now, uh, for those of you who like JavaScript, they are entirely, uh, uh, platforms entirely based on JavaScript. The first one that uh, I would like to share with you is called IO Broker. It's written in JavaScript with, of course, Node.js and Redis. It runs on both ARM and Intel devices. It's compatible, uh, x86, 64 devices. It's compatible with uh, various GNU Linux distributions, Windows and Mac OS, so pretty much you can run it uh, on any operating system out there. Um, it supports, um, almost uh, 300 uh, connected devices. Of course, this number is uh, far less compared to some of the systems that we covered at the beginning. Uh, but it supports uh, numerous adapters for integrating third-party systems and uh, protocols. One of the key features here is, again, uh, that it has automatic discovery um, devices uh, of devices over Ping uh, and Inquity. Started uh, in Germany, it's available in GitHub under MIT license. Uh, if you remember at the beginning, I told you about this collaborative projects by, started by several, uh, several associations. Uh, one of them was Mozilla and the Web of Things. Uh, so Mozilla is not only working on a protocol and a way how to integrate uh, things together, but they are also providing a reference implementation of a gateway, which is called Mozilla Web Things Gateway. Uh, it's again written in JavaScript, just like um, in the previous solution, uh, the IO broker with um, Node.js, and there are some Python scripts as well. Um, it runs on two devices and um, out of the box, and there are instructions how to easily uh, got it working on Raspberry Pi 3, B or B plus, and Turisomnia. Are you familiar with the Turisomnia project? Anyone? All right. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, Turisomnia is a very interesting project because uh, it's an, an entirely open source Wi-Fi uh, router, high-end router. That's why Mozilla has chosen Web of Things to support it. Um, it uses the Web of Things framework. Of course, the, the task of uh, the whole gateway is to monitor and control your uh, smart home devices with a unified web interface and uh, to provide add-ons so that you can integrate the various devices. Uh, it's again available at GitHub under, uh, this time under Mozilla Public License uh, 2.0. Um, Katie Giori is uh, giving a talk in one of the other rooms. Uh, she is representative of Mozilla. So if you have uh, technical questions regarding Mozilla Web of Things Gateway, you can also find her and ask, uh, because it's a, it's a really interesting project. Uh, we're moving on with uh, Kawa OS. Uh, this is a um, server written in C++. Uh, the uh, web application is based on AngularJS. I'm not sure which version of AngularJS. I know that in the front-end web development world, this is also important, but I'm not sure for the moment. Uh, there is a graphical user interface for mob mobile devices and desktop application written in Qt and QML. Um, I saw that there are some integration APIs that are written in the Go programming language, so uh, this solution integrates together uh, various programming languages. Um, it's built with the Yocto project and open embedded, so it provides a Linux distribution uh, for the supported devices, which are Raspberry Pi, Premo board, QB board, Intel Atom, and uh, of course, uh, other Intel x86-64 uh, machines, which are defined pretty much by the, uh, the, the configuration uh, that BitBakes picks up when, when it builds the image. 
Um, most of the users are French, uh, French speaking. Uh, this is uh, another uh, thing that I should, uh, um, sh should note. Some of those systems are, uh, have regional popularity, which means that they're popular in cer certain countries and you can see that uh, sometimes the documentation is, or the forums are not only of English speaking people. And I've noticed while I was doing the research for this, um, this presentation that um, a lot of the solutions are very popular in certain region uh, depending on uh, the, uh, the creator of the project. Uh, Kaos is available uh, in GitHub under GPL v3 license. Um, OpenNet Home is another solution. Uh, it's written in Java and uh, Apache uh, Maven. It runs on Windows, Mac OS, GNU Linux distributions, which include uh, Raspbian for Raspberry Pi. Uh, it supports, again, uh, multiple protocols and devices, including Wi-Fi and uh, radio band devices. Uh, it uh, offers an open REST interface, and uh, of course, uh, just as uh, pretty much any of the other systems can be extended with uh, plugins, again, it's available at uh, GitHub and uh, the license is uh, uh, GPL v3. And um, the next uh, system is Smart Home NG. It's written in Python. It's available for manual installation or with Docker. There is an um, image for Raspberry Pi, which is uh, based on the Raspbian distribution. It has been started seven years ago, but the user documentation at the moment is only in German. However, the developer documentation uh, is in English. This is, um, this is a fine example how a system can, be, uh, uh, can have a long history and can be regionally very popular. Most of the users are obviously based uh, uh, in German-speaking countries, and because of that, the user documentation uh, is available in German. The source code is in GitHub under GPL v3 license. Um, and um, uh, another solution, that this solution uh, is more exotic in my opinion because it's written in C-sharp. It's again uh, open source. Uh, Python and JavaScript are also used. It's available for Microsoft Windows, uh, Debian and Ubuntu with compatible or and any um, compatible Debian derived distribution that support their packages and Mac OS of course. There is an Android uh, client application. I couldn't find an iOS application. Um, it supports um, uh, some, uh, of course, uh, quite a lot of devices, including some um, scenarios for uh, voice control. It has been started uh, seven years ago, and uh, the source code is available, again, in GitHub. Um, so, okay, um, we are coming towards the end of the presentation. As you have seen, there are so many, so many uh, uh, solutions. We didn't do a deep dive in any of them. Um, However, I have to say that the, the systems that we uh, mentioned so far are systems that solve this particular problem, how to integrate all those devices that are available on the market from different vendors and to work together. However, if you are interested in home automation with open source software tools, there is a huge variety and there are awesome projects that uh, deserve our attention. Uh, I'm personally using Kodi. Um, which Kodi is a uh, media center. Um, it, um, it, there, there are several distributions like uh, LibreELEC, uh, OpenELEC, uh, which you can install on a, on a device, plug it on your TV, and uh, enjoy an open source solution for um, uh, watching your favorite uh, movies and shows. Another solution which is uh, having an open source um, client is Plex. It's a, it's a streaming solution again. Uh, for those of you interested in uh, voices, voice assistants, uh, Mycroft is um, an alternative of uh, Google Assistant and Alexa. Snips is another uh, open source tool that provides you options to build your own home assistant. Of course, on cloud, if you don't want your data, all of your data in the cloud and if you prefer uh, to, uh, to keep uh, your favorite photos or documents in, in your home in your own cloud. Uh, for uh, the people who like uh, uh, retro gaming, there, there are some great projects uh, like RetroPie, which allows you uh, to get back into the uh, 80s or early 90s and enjoy your favorite games. Uh, I, have, I have one set up with really cool case uh, that includes RetroPie. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time uh, to play with it. All right. Um, so 
As you have seen, there is a huge variety of uh, open source home automation platforms nowadays. Several years ago, there was a demand on the, on, in the open source community for such kind of solutions, but at the moment there are a lot of solutions. Uh, if you ask me, uh, too many of those solutions are available. In my opinion, and this is a personal opinion, um, uh, Home Assistant, OpenHub2, and Domotics are ahead of game as of the moment. Um, I'm personally using um, most of the time Home Assistant and OpenHub2. The good thing is that you can uh, run uh, both of them simultaneously. Uh, Domotics is also a nice solution, uh, as you have seen um, from the previous slides, but it doesn't have such a good MQTT support, and therefore I prefer to use Home Assistant and OpenHub2 because I have a lot of uh, open source hardware devices that I create on my own, and uh, uh, for me it's easier to integrate them uh, in Home Assistant and OpenHub2. Unless you have a very, very good reason, please do not start another home automation platform. Uh, we have plenty of them. Uh, in my opinion, we should focus our efforts as a, as a community in uh, making, making things better, making new features, better features. Uh, one of the problems that um, I have experienced and some of my friends who have tried uh, those systems who are, who are not engineers is that um, very often the installation uh, is uh, very difficult and time consuming. So one of the hardest steps is how to get started with some of those uh, platforms. Uh, some of them have better, better uh, process for installation. For example, the Mozilla Web of Things has a very straightforward uh, process uh, how you can you know, connect your, uh, your gateway to your Wi-Fi network, but for some of the other, uh, for some of the other systems, uh, you have to you know, download an image, flash it to a micro SD card, after that mount the SD card, type in your Wi-Fi, and for a regular user, uh, this is uh, something that's difficult. I know that everyone here in this uh, room is an engineer and probably it sounds silly that it could be difficult to mount an SD card and go to a specific location and type in a Wi-Fi password, but uh, if you think about uh, end consumers, sometimes this could be, could be hard. Um, so the business models are uh, dif um, different. Uh, as you have seen, some sy systems uh, provide everything open source and rely on donations. Other systems, such as uh, Home Assistant, uh, assistant uh, have paid cloud subscriptions, and this is one of their ways uh, to get some money to fund the, the further development of the project. Um, often, uh, there are companies providing paid support for the people who cannot um, solve uh, something uh, in, in the, uh, with, with, uh, the system, uh, with the tool. Of course, there, is, um, uh, there are marketplaces for plugins, and sometimes, uh, sometimes there are paid plugins, no matter that uh, the, whole, the whole core uh, part of the project is free and open source. And uh, as you have seen, there are a couple of uh, solutions which provide not only the software, but also the hardware, uh, which, uh, uh, and their business model is based on that, to, to sell the hardware and uh, with the profit to continue developing. Thank you very much. Um, th these are a few useful links. Uh, this, is, this is the link that I've mentioned. If you want to learn the internals about uh, Home Assistant, uh, it's, um, it's a couple of years old, but uh, still very valid. Um, so we're, I'm, I'm a bit late, but I would like to hear your questions. So thank you very much for your attention, and please let me know what questions you have. Yes. This is for the recording, yeah. Okay, just for the record, so you said uh, we should have good reason to use pro do our own stuff, right? So, but when I got it right, you are using two different tools. Why are you using two tools? What is the benefit of one and the other, and why doesn't you use one and the other? Okay, yeah, this is a really good question. So the question is why I'm using uh, home, both home Assistant and Open Hub. Uh, I don't have a good reason <laughs> for this. I'm just a curious uh, person, and I like to, to experiment. And one of the reasons was to see if they can work together. <laughs> so. so it's, it's not about that the feature is missing A and the feature B. 
well, it's more a different approach they have. Yes, they have different. Uh, they have different approach. Uh, I would say that in terms of features that I, I personally need, Home Assistant has more features, but um, it's always good to try new things. And uh, um, in February, I visited FOSDEM, which is the largest open source conference in, uh, in Europe. Uh, I met the creator of OpenHub, and since I have been using OpenHub in the past, I decided to give it another try because I had a chat with him. He had a nice boot, and uh, there were a lot of improvements uh, in OpenHub in the recent years. Yeah. Uh, do you have other questions? I think. I yeah, question. sure. <laughs> so, when I look into IoT and home automation, the biggest challenge I face personally is the total the amount of different protocols, the test layers, physically test layer. I mean, a lot of today coming up stuff is using Wi Fi, which makes some stuff easier, right? Security. Keep out of mind at the moment. But if I look at the traditional home automation, I have uh, X10, I have this Homatic stuff, and all of this, and they use different frequencies for this. What is your approach or your idea of might be cool to bridge them together? Uh, yeah, this is an excellent question, very common question. Uh, I think every one of us is having this type of uh, problems. And um, uh, in my opinion, um, as you have seen, there are so many projects, too many projects. However, there are certain projects that have uh, this critical mass of users that are um, more actively contributing. And um, one of the things that are there, most, most of the time people are contributing back to these projects are plugins or add-ons, whatever is the name within the, the, the project, so that uh, they can integrate uh, third-party devices like devices that communicate to different protocols like hubs to communicate with, for, for example, let's say Zigbee or whatever. Uh, and um, if you have such device at home, and I think every one of us is having, the best, uh, the best approach to pick up the right home automation platform for you is first to go and check the in the documentation how difficult it is to, to get support for your particular device and which uh, additional hardware to use uh, to uh, make them talk to each other. Okay, and uh, open up and home automation could be used the same protocol? Yes, yes. Um, the whole idea behind all these platforms that you saw is to solve this problem. Uh, the, the thing is that there are so many different protocols so that uh, different platforms have different level of support depending on the, on the platform. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions? Yeah. Uh, can we just? I always found the issue with um, getting into home automation is that uh, all the different devices available were not necessarily compatible with the one that you were trying to achieve. So I'm curious if during your research you found any listing or basis to the compatibility of actual devices with the core system. Because that's, I, I, I tried to go down this route Uh, yeah, so um, those, those projects that are widely used and have a lot of contributors uh, provide on their websites a list of pro products that are supported. Uh, for example, at home, because I can, because I, can, can I have Alexa in, in my living room and uh, 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 Google Assistant, Google Home in, uh, in my kitchen and uh, the, the room that I use uh, to work from. Uh, and I have Chromecasts uh, around the TVs and uh, lightning from different vendors, and this becomes a huge problem if you want to connect them together. I don't like the idea that big corporations want us to buy uh, things from a, one vendor just because those things can work, uh, talk, to, uh, talk together, and I'm using uh, home automation open source tools to solve this problem. Uh, the best approach that I would recommend you is to go to the website of the particular Project, I'll, if, if I'm on your place, I would start with the three, the first three that we've uh, uh, covered and check if the particular device that you have in mind is already supported. 
if it's not supported, uh, which, which is possible if it's a rare device, uh, the next step would be to see uh, how difficult is it to get it supported. Because you, since it's an open source project, you have the freedom to write a plugin and integrate it. Like, no, Is I'm not. Like okay. Yeah, this sounds uh, really fun. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough time for games, but uh, I'll try to give it. A, I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for joining again.